Hello everyone, I'm Annie Gibbons and you're listening to Memoirs of Successful Women, the podcast where you get to hear candid conversations with fascinating women from around the globe who share aspects of their business and life journey, how they measure their success and what they have learnt along the way. Well, hello and welcome to Memoirs of Successful Women. Today, I have the delight of introducing you to Colleen Biggs, who is an award-winning peak performance consultant with 20 years of experiences and launched over 340 businesses. Like, wow. She's an international speaker. Uh, She's an author of, of course, number one, international best-selling books, such as Anatomy of Accomplishment and Step Into the Spotlight to Expand Your Influence. And she's also a CEO of three businesses and one of them which is how I connected to Colleen was through Lead Up for Women which is a community that boasts tens of thousands of women female entrepreneurs that are driven by their passions and they're there to support each other to promote each other's businesses with purpose and just yeah fuel those female voices uh, with power that um, leading the way for women all around the world uh, so that we can make sure that we do dominate that entrepreneurial market so welcome to the program Colleen. Thank you, Annie. It's such an honor to be with you today. Oh, it's just a great delight to have you on the program. So where do we even start? How on earth have you over 20 years launched 340 businesses? Let's just start there. What kind of business? Yeah, and- I would say, yeah, I would say on an average, I probably had about 40 clients, you know, anywhere from 30 to 40 clients at a time that I was working with. So as you can imagine, in a regular work week, I was extremely busy. Mm-hmm. Um, and the one thing that I haven't really ever said on a podcast or said to anyone before was one of my clients said to me, you know, how many clients are you working with? I said, well, I think at the time I had about 39 And she said, how is that even possible? Because every time I get on the phone with you, it's like, I'm your only client. And, you know, I think that's the more most important piece was why I was so successful. And it wasn't that I launched businesses that tanked, right? So why I was so successful working with the the CEOs and the, the business owners that I worked with was because I really got into the trenches with them. I felt their pain. I celebrated their wins with them. And I really treated them individually like their own, you know, their own situation. So, Mm -hmm. you know, you have to remember when you're working with people, you have to meet them where they are and really work through the process with them. And they're not a number. um, They're not, you know, just kind of the next person in line. We really need to treat people through for their specific situation, what they're going through, what the map of their world looks like, what the map of um, what's happening, because these are, these are individual people like you and I, Annie, that are putting up, you know, their kids' college funds, they're mortgaging their homes, they're putting up hundreds of thousands of dollars to open up a business, and they want it to be successful, and they're afraid of failure, just like any of us as entrepreneurs are afraid of failure. So I think it's very important that we recognize how, how much... Um, they're sacrificing and that when we're working with people, we put in the sacrifice too. And that was really, you know, for me, um, what taught me a lot about business, about working in business, you know, um, scaling businesses, launching businesses. And then I would have uh, owners that would come back to me and want to launch a second or a third business. And then that, that becomes a whole different mindset of yeah. running multiple businesses because you can't be in the business when you're running multiple businesses like that. That's when you have to really learn how to delegate, um, have processes and procedures in place. So that was a different mindset. But I really enjoyed all my years in working with businesses and, and being able to provide individual owners, men and women and couples, you know, with their dream of what they've always wanted to do was have that freedom to take their children to school or spend time with their 
family in the evening. It's not have to travel as much and then make an impact on the community. Mm. And, you know, that was what I loved the most out of what I did. And when you're working with that many clients for that many years in a row, it's very easy to scale to that number very quickly of how many businesses that I was able to launch. And each one of those took an average of about 11 months to launch. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I love I love what you've mentioned there about just that personal attention with, you, with each client because I definitely find that myself, that it is so important. Um, it is so important that you've, they've got your undivided attention when you're coaching them one-to-one and that, you know, you're not just rolling out a program or, you know, because everyone's situation is their baby. It's unique to them. It's overwhelmingly special to them that's right they've put everything on the line they've often done it very bravely and boldly right you know to actually leave a day job and go I'm going to become an entrepreneur and then like ah, you know the pressure is huge and they need that support from you what what did you learn about people in all of this time so you've got all of those different businesses and there's obviously the formula of business you know yeah growth, scaling, success. What did you learn most about the people that you're working with and how they approach that process? Yeah, you know, you mentioned it in the in the, the beginning there when you said they're all different. Mm. So they each have a un, their unique um, style in how they lead, right? They each have their unique, um, I, we used to do a SWOT analysis with them because each one of them have character strengths, right? So we want to leverage the strengths that they have and really help them hire uh, the people that are really possess the strengths of what their opportunities were. So instead of them hiring little mini-me's yeah. across the board, it was very important for them to have a very diverse staff and for them to have people working with them. And sometimes they were very young and we were training 16 and 17 year olds. And sometimes they were, you know, in their late twenties or early thirties, but the business itself tended to attract younger employees, which can be a challenge when you're, you know, training a younger employee to sell a program to a parent, right? So that can be very difficult. So the one thing I learned through all of that was a, you have to meet people where they're at and you have to have compassion for people. There's not a timeline that's set that, that I pushed people. Like I didn't try to fit a square peg into a round hole. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't work. You'll be pushing forever and it'll never get through. I really wanted it to be about them. I wanted it to be about their journey. I wanted it to be about about their wants and needs and what they really felt like they wanted to do. Um, I guided them, of course, with all of my experience on, you know, uh, what was best. But I found that when you work with people and show them in black and white and help them arrive to their own decision, Mm -hmm. then then they themselves convince themselves. So I'll Mm -hmm. give you an example. If we're negotiating a lease for a brick and mortar store and um, they have the opportunity for maybe some additional TI dollars for build out versus a longer lease or less money down. And they say to me, what should I do? Hmm. Right. I don't want to give them the answer on what I think they should do. I want them to arrive at their answer. So I would say, why don't we do this? Let's get it into black and white. Yeah. So let's see how much would you have to put down? How much would it cost to do the build out? What is it going to cost over this 10 years? This is how much you pay. Now let's go look at the other one. If they were to pay more build out costs in TI dollars and you put a little bit more down and then you have a longer lease, this is how much you pay over the 15 years. And they look at it and go, well, <laughs> obviously (laughs) the 10 year one is the better deal. And I would, I'd say, obviously, Mm. so I guess that's the one you should choose, but I mean, treating people and teaching them, but showing them in a way where you're not fishing for them. Right. I'm not out there just telling them, yes, no, do this. Don't do this because then they feel like they don't have any authority in that decision Mm. and having the authority in the decision is part of the permission and the ownership of owning a business and being able to do it themselves, but just having me as a guide. So that was probably the most important thing I learned about people was some could make really quick decisions. Others failed on the trigger and they would procrastinate, procrastinate because they were afraid to make the decision. So I would always start the relationship with 
I just want you to know that I will always be honest with you. I expect you to always be honest with me. You can approach me with any question that you want. I'll never lie to you. I'll always be, you know, upfront. And I will uh, let you know, truthfully, if you're doing well in the process, if we're behind, if we're ahead, if you need to speed things up. So it was very, it was very nice because for them, they knew that when I came to them and said, okay, do you remember in the beginning when I said I'd always be truthful for you? Here's one of those times. And then it wasn't a hard conversation. And I think so many people have struggles with the quote unquote hard conversations. But when you set the context in the beginning Mm. and they know what to expect from you and you know what to expect from them and you come to them from a loving space and guiding them, like here's one of those times when I said, You've got to pull the trigger because we're going to lose this deal. If you don't make a decision, you can't him and haw about it anymore. We've got to move forward. They appreciated my guidance rather than feeling like I was pressuring them into something they didn't want to do. So that understanding and respect you have for each other is another big piece yeah. of working. People. Yeah. Oh. Beautifully articulated, absolutely. It's that, it's that that moment with all of us, really, that you want something so bad, but the, it's scary. It's terrifying. It can be paralyzing, you know. And so that sort of, you know, what do I do? And and having someone, I love what you said there. You you help them to go. This is one of those moments because that's it. It's not there for personal. It's actually mm-hmm. just you're going down to the process. The process means that it's likely you'll reach some, you know, um, hard hard walls, and you. This is one of them, and then so to move move forward and then yeah. how much do you notice after they take those steps which are hard steps they then skyrocket into that next oh next- my god <laughs> you know I, I tell every single one of them in the beginning when I work with them and even my clients now you know being in the entrepreneur world and not being in the corporate world but being out in the entrepreneur world and building my own businesses and, and helping others build their businesses just like I did back in corporate America I always say you're going to look back and not even recognize the person you started in the beginning. I promise you. And I have been through tears. I've been through um, families that have had children, uh, you know, break arms, you know, the day before their business was going to open. They've had some crazy things happen. We've had floods the morning before businesses have opened. You name it, we've been through it. Um, And some have wanted to back out, you know, they get cold feet um, and some just charge forward without, you know, making clear decisions. So you slow some down, you speed some up. um, But you're always truthful with them and you re, you remind them that this is their journey. This isn't my journey. This is mm-hmm. their journey. And so if they feel that they're being pushed or they're not feeling like they have, they're in control, sometimes you need to slow it down and remind them that they can make that decision to slow things down because it's about their business. It's their money. It's their journey. And so sometimes I've seen, especially in the corporate world, but in the entrepreneur world, I've seen this as well, Annie, where some people get so caught up in just what it is, whatever it is that my consultant or my coach says that I do, I just do. Yeah. And they forget the freedoms that they have to make choices. Mm. And sometimes their coach might offer them an opportunity to them or something to do and it's not landing right for them. Right. So maybe some red flags are going off or doesn't settle right with them, but they feel like, well, this is the person I'm working with. So I guess this is what I have to do. And we have to remember that we have the uh, freedoms to challenge uh, those during sometimes, because it might've worked for maybe four other clients that my coach worked with, but maybe it doesn't work for me. And so again, getting into the map of the world of that person, meeting them where they're at and understanding them. Like my conversations that I have, whether I'm opening similar businesses or very different businesses, every conversation I have is very different because Mm. the person is different. Their business is different. Their journey is different. And so some you have to handhold a little bit longer, have a different, you know, talk in a different tone with them. Others, they want it short, sweet, to the point. Don't mess around. Let's get on the phone. Let's get off the phone. I'm task oriented. I just want to take action. Others, it's not like that. Yeah. You got to, you got to show the whole picture (laughs) to get the buy-in. So you really have to, to meld with your client for them to um, 
to trust you and know that you're making, helping them make the decisions that's best for them mm. and not just for a business, quote unquote, you know? Mm. Yeah. All about, all about them, 100%. Yeah. So why was your, uh, first, was it your first book, Anatomy of Accomplishment? Yeah. Uh, why did you choose that to be your first book? It, you yeah, know, so it's- able to achieve. Yeah. I wanted, I wanted so bad, you know, I had it on my vision board and I wanted so bad to be an author. And I had a little stack of books on my vision board that said bestseller. And um, I had an opportunity with a lady that I had brought in and a panel in St. Louis that wanted to do a compilation book. And I thought, I've never heard of that before. What's a compilation book? And this was a few years ago. My first kind of, again, I'm I'm in this millionaire playground called entrepreneurship for the first time. I don't, I mean, I've always wanted to write a book, but I don't know what that does for my credibility. I didn't know that more than one person could write a book Mm -hmm. other than maybe two authors, but I didn't know there could be several. So she came to me and offered me this. And um, so I took her up on the offer and that was my first book that I had ever done. So that was like me tipping my toe in the water of being an author and then um, after, I, after I wrote a chapter in that book and got to know all the other ladies, I've collaborated now with the ladies in the book so many times over and they've gone and written their own books and they've um, written quotes for my books. And I went on to write two journals that came to me during meditation one day that I felt like I needed to write. So those two journals are behind me here if anyone's watching on video. Um, and they're just small, you know, uh, journals. One's just lined with some um, affirmations in it. And the other one actually has writing your 10 gratitudes every day. And uh, the second page is about your intentions for the day and setting those and what you're going to do to, to take care of things you need to take care of, but take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. And I needed it at that time. You know, that was something I needed to write it down every day and make sure I was taking care of myself Because again, as entrepreneurs, if we don't have anyone monitoring our work, some of us, like me, are overachievers, and then we can work too much. And so, and that would be at the detriment of our own health. Mm -hmm. And with that, I needed the reminder of what I needed to do every day to take care of myself, what I was going to do for myself. So I wrote that because I knew I couldn't be the only one out there that- you know, loved what I did and was so passionate about it that you just forget and the time flies by because it's so great. But then you realize like, wait a minute, there's a reason why I'm sore. There's a reason why my back hurts. There's a reason why I'm hungry. It's because I haven't moved in 10 hours, you know, and uh, you're not drinking enough water. You're not moving. You're not exercising. So those journals kind of fell out of me. And then, um, Then the latest book is Step It in the Spotlight Mm -hmm. to expand your influence that I uh, compiled uh, and got 11 authors together with me. And it's just phenomenal. It's every way that a female can step into the spotlight to expand her influence. So it's expanding your influence through vision writing, expanding your influence through speaking, through being an Instagram influencer. So it's all these different ways that we as entrepreneurs can expand our influence. So it's a really like a business manual on um, how to expand your influence to attract more clients instead of having the cold call or go fishing Mm -hmm. for them, you know, constantly meeting new people and understanding that the people that are already in your community, you know, are the ones that are probably most likely your buyers. (laughs) And so you don't have to look at the rotating door you know, constantly in your business. So, yeah. Well, congratulations on that. That is yeah, super thanks. exciting to go from thanks. a moment of, yeah, I'm, I'm just part of something and then be able to be, I'm now coordinating others to have that opportunity. Yeah. And I love the whole essence of collaboration because that's obviously one of my passion, passion topics and to be able to be collaborating with women. And that's right, not just to make that happen um, and to then build confidence so that you could go to your next level, but then you were also then able to give that, that platform to them you know on their journey and be able to um that's right now be on each other's podcasts and be in other opportunities and speaking events that's what it's all about it's actually building this global tribe right is that has that then led you (laughs) to be lead up for women right because now yeah yeah, like women you need to be helping each other here yeah yeah that is um you know i coming from corporate 
there's not a, a tribe there of women. I'm going to just throw that out there and squash whatever belief anyone else has. And many women that have come from that world understand that it is really difficult um, and not every wo other woman is supportive of you. Most of my mentors and sponsors were males yeah. and they were who really helped me get where I needed to go in my career and the women, not so much. Did I leave some really good friends? Yes. Are they still my friends? Yes. I'm not saying all women are bad in corporate America. That is not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the majority of women struggle because there's very few seats at the top in the, in the executive, you know, seat. So they're fighting for one or two seats instead of banding together and creating three or four more seats. And so I didn't like that feeling in corporate America of that. So I had decided I wanted, I knew that stepping in the spotlight for me changed my career, catapulted my career. How could I help women in the entrepreneurial world do that? If I had a women's organization that I created, that I controlled, meaning the women in this organization are not mean girls, they're not judgmental, they're not competing. They are kind, they support other women, they understand that there's the law of abundance and they're not scarce, there's no scarcity, so there's no reason to compete. We're just here to help each other, lift each other, share the spotlight with each other. With that, I wanted a community that not only had that foundation, but that could give women credibility. And when I came out in the entrepreneur world, that was when I realized, wow, we need a lot of credibility out here. And a lot of women don't have that, right? I came from the corporate world and had a lot of credibility I brought with me of years of working in business. And a lot of women didn't have that. How could I help them? And then I get out here and find out being an author's credibility, speaking's a credibility, yeah. Having a podcast is a credibility, all the things I didn't have in corporate America that I needed to acquire. So how could I help other women do that? So my life's work is about building platforms for women. The magazine's a platform, the podcast is a platform, the Teaching Tuesday workshops that we promote and they host platform. Member Monday Spotlight platform, Thrive Thursday Spotlight platform. You name it, um, I've created chapters, platforms, um, spotlights, and it's all for the members to just consistently be promoted all the time throughout my community every day. Every day I'm running another event or I'm spotlighting someone um, on social media or on YouTube or on the radio or on a podcast or in the magazine, you name it. We're consistently promoting women because that's what they need Mm -hmm. And that's what all the businesses that I opened all those years, that was the number one thing we worked on was being visible in the community. You have to get connected in the community, let people know you're there because it, there's that we, you know, you build it, they will come. You don't just build a website online and then, you know, hundreds of thousands of people just start going to it. You have to tell them it's there, you know, to build the traction. So I know how crucial that is for women in business. So I wanted to make sure that part of the community was, not only supporting each other, but then having that opportunity for them to shine. Mm. Oh, yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Um, and I've definitely noticed that over my career too, exactly the same sort of journey that I've been more mentored by men and um, I've been in that very competitive space of, that's right, if you're a female CEO, then I've been for the last decade that you're, you know, there's only so many people females yeah. who are in those roles and and uh it is so important to actually change that what are you noticing about the cultural shift then since you started up lead up for women you know that culture of actually getting women to not only love the concept of it but to believe in it to believe yeah. that you don't need to be competing with each other you actually need to unite because that's a different concept right you know we all love to go oh yeah i'm there for you babe <laughs> and then you kind of like go but if you're actually going okay i'm trying to build my business in a similar space How's that working? What, you know, is that wave really smashing hard now or is it still in a, a time of transition? You know, I see a lot more women today um, coming together and helping each other, a lot more women than I ever have before. In fact, I would say, 
the year 2021, I feel it stronger than I ever did back even in 2019, Mm -hmm. you know, as an entrepreneur, it's really strong this year and they're not afraid. And the more that they see by example, right, the more that they they're modeling, they're not afraid to get into the spotlight. They're feeling more comfortable doing that, you know, in this nurturing space that I provided for them. But more than that, Annie, I feel like they're not afraid They're not afraid of other women in their space because I collaborate with so many other female organizations and I bring them into Lead Up for Women. So when I'm promoting Lead Up for Women, I'll say, and next week on Tuesday, uh, Foxy Women is inviting you to their networking event and the Grand Connections is inviting you to their networking event. And I collaborate with other women's organizations. And when they see me do that, And they see how they get to expand their influence in all these other communities as well and meet so many new people. Then they realize like, wait, this is really working. Mm. The more we collaborate with other people, the more I'm actually getting more clients (laughs) and expanding. And I'm not worried about competition because it doesn't hurt my membership to expand with other and collaborate with other women's groups because they don't offer what I offer. There isn't a community out there that does. In fact, if you looked at every woman's community out there, not one of them are ran the same, mm. offer the same. They might have similarities, yeah. but you're not going to get the same from each group. There's Polka Dot, another one that we um, collaborate with, uh, Win, you name it. There, There's a plethora of women's groups that I want the women in my community to become a part of their community as well. Yeah, yeah. I love that. So you're actually practicing what you preach, really. You know, that's- Oh, right. yeah. And you have to do that because people watch you. When you're a coach, when you're leading, they'll be looking at that going, okay, she says it's all great, we should do it, but does she do it yeah. herself? And that is that is a massive part of their trust in you and that that credibility to go, yeah, I'm not I'm not worried about that. Yeah. Um, and I love also that you, you've you referenced, you know, that, that personal branding that is just getting stronger and stronger in- um, in, in all areas of business now. And it, and it aligns to what you were saying about those that you coach, that at the end of the day, people need to resonate with you and what you have to offer and you have to be able to connect with them. And so it's like every any business, you know, the you're solving someone's problem, you're, you're, you're meeting their needs and not everybody um, will get that from um, the same business. You know, that's why the, it's great that there are varieties and, and even if they are in yeah. that space your client will be happier you know and if you actually help them on their way to find yeah. that then they'll be thankful right because yeah. when they get the result they're like oh my <laughs> gosh they're actually very likely to come back to you at a different time for a different reason right uh, and and I love that about it you know that you don't have to go oh no I don't want to tell you it's like yeah help them out oh yeah oh yeah uh, let me tell you I'm not the community for everyone and I'm not the coach for everyone Absolutely not. And I know that there's been women in my community that have not hired me. And during one of my events for a lunch and learn, and they went into a room and then they hired one of the coaches that was in the room. Right. So one of the, and they're both members of lead up for women and they wind up working together. And I think that's amazing. Yeah. That is what this is all about. The goal is for you to find your tribe yeah. and find the resources you need in your business. It doesn't matter who it is in the community or outside the community, all women need to find that fuel of that tribe that they trust. And all women need to have the resources necessary to grow their businesses. So wherever you find those resources, it doesn't matter, just find them. Because in the end game for this, my vision is much bigger than lead up for women expanding. My vision for women is women expand into Mm. these roles and leaderships in Fortune 500 companies. And instead of 3% of them being women, why don't we have 60% of them being women or 50% of them being women? Mm. And why don't we have 80% of women in entrepreneur? I mean, we already control global spending by 82%. So if we already control global, global spending, that goes to show that we have so much still that's offered as opportunities for us out there in business. And the more that we help each other grow our confidence in being able to do it and support each other along the journey, the faster we're going to get there. We fight against ourselves, compete, judge, do all those things. We're never going to get there. (laughs) 
Exactly. Never going to get there. The ultimate sabotage on yourself yeah. um, and each other. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I know. When what influences are, are we with, with that kind of control on spending in world economies? Um, I mean, that's massive in itself, isn't it? You know, yeah. so, uh, extremely influential. What are the main reasons besides competing with each other and that, con- um, that culture that was unfortunate? What are the other reasons that women don't naturally speak up to lead up? You know, they, they, they are hesitant in being you know putting themselves into the spotlight to expanding their influence they like the idea of it but they still hesitate why you know I've seen this uh Annie all the way from CEOs of companies that were over hundreds and thousands of people down to the solopreneur it comes uh, always comes down to worth Mm. always comes down to worth they could have earned that spot Yep. And been um, and been at the top of that company, and when they're asked to share a message to the employees, the imposter syndrome sets in, and they think, "What could I possibly say to inspire anyone?" Mm-hmm. You know, all the way down to the solopreneur that just started her business and is trying to get her self confidence up to get out there because she wonders, "Does anyone want to buy what I have to sell? Does anyone believe in what I have to sell? Does anyone need what I have to sell?" And the answer is yes. If you have a calling and you're being pulled to do something and you have a skill set that's been, you know, God given of something that you are amazing at doing and really no one else can do it the way you do it, then the answer is yes. And you're robbing people by not bringing that to the surface and bringing it out there. And there's so many women that are still hiding in the shadows and shrinking back. Mm -hmm. And it really all comes down to worth. They don't. And I I struggled with this when I left corporate America too. Mm. You know, I was, you know, doing really well in corporate America and was really good at what I did. And then when I took that leap and said, well, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to leave it. Mm. I was like, wow, my self-worth was tied to how much money I made. And I never realized that until I didn't make any money. Yeah. And then I sat there like, so what does this mean? Mm. So what does my existence mean then? Because if I've always been the breadwinner and I've always brought in an abundant amount of money, then what does that mean of who I am today? And Mm -hmm. so sometimes stripping yourself of a lot of these other things around us that we think build what our worth is and really scaling it down to look inside to understand what your worth is, that's when you really can build the future that you want because you start from the inside to build the outside. And I had to stop and go back inside after all those years of what I had accomplished to say, hey, who are you and Mm. what do you bring to the table? And I had to build it from scratch again. And I know a lot of women struggle with that. And I also know that the more that each one of us are there to help them, to guide them, to put them in the spotlight, but say, don't worry, I'll hold your hand through the entire interview. I'll Mm -hmm. never let you fall. You will look amazing by the time we're done. You know, just helping them really believe in themselves in every step of the way. And, um, and that, you know, it doesn't matter if you're an actress, if you're a billionaire, they all struggle with imposter syndrome, because every time you reach another level, you struggle before you expand, yeah. you know, and get uncomfortable. And then you get back into your comfort zone again. But at every level, we struggle when we hit that level. So when we get comfortable and like, okay, we got this and we're rolling along, you're going to hit that level again. And yeah. then it's going to get uncomfortable for a while. And you're going to feel like you've got imposter syndrome, but that's a good thing. Cause that means you've hit that level and now you need exactly. to grow past it. That's the only way to get bigger and make a greater impact, you know? And I tell women all the time, I know you don't want to talk about money and you're out here for your purpose, but I said, I always tell them, you cannot make a great impact if you have no money, if you're broke. (laughs) Exactly. So, So you're out here to make money and they're like, money is not that important to me. I go, if you tell money, it's not important. Money will stay away from you. You will have tumbleweeds flowing through your bank account. Promise you that. So money is important. It's important for for us to make any impact on the world, for us to pay our bills, for us to be able to put other people to work, for us to build businesses, for us to help other women build businesses, for us to be able to fully impact charities. Money matters. And so if you're an entrepreneur, money matters and we need to treat it that way. And you need to 
want to go after a lot of it because the more money you have, the greater impact you can have. It creates opportunity, not happiness. It creates opportunity. And what you do with that opportunity is what matters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's what you do with it. I, I totally, yeah. totally agree. It's amazing. You know, as a, as a fellow coach, that's it. You know, one of the first questions you ask a client is, you know, well, what financial goals do you want to achieve? You know, at the moment, I'm, I've just developed a new course online on how to create online courses because people want to create online courses. <laughs> and like you can you can help people make a course, but they're all about, oh, I just want to have my passion there. I want to want to, you know, be able to package it because this is all my knowledge. And I'm going, yeah, but how much do you want to earn from this? You know, what's what's what are you expecting in your revenue? You know, if you're actually putting out, it is about money as well. It's about it's a balance. You want to obviously live and breathe and love it, but you also want to have that revenue so you can yeah. make more things you can give away things you can be a philanthropist you can um, give to charities you can do whatever you like and and I love that I love that and you know through through the work that you do that's right you can mentor and coach oh yeah and have so many more opportunities by being successful yeah so on your success journey this this podcast called memoirs of successful women what have been your biggest learnings for you not your clients in your journey Girl, we could be here all day. Mm. Let me tell you, um, I think, no, I know. I know my biggest, my biggest learning, two pieces. One, we can't do it by ourselves. So as much as you think you have to do it all and do it all on your own, that is the hardest road you will travel. So you can build your business on your own. You cannot hire people to help you. You cannot hire a coach. You can try and do it on your own but it will be a long, windy journey. Or to me, this, you know, speed is the fastest path to wealth. So I like to hire people to help me along the way that have already done it before me. And yeah. so I just model what they do. I learn from them. So, oh, you became rich. Tell me how you did that. How did you build that women's organization? What did you do? So I have no problems asking Asking's the biggest piece and, and the area, the one area that I, I failed so much in, in the beginning building this until I was like, why don't you just go back to how you helped everyone else, right? We forget because you help so many other people, but then you never take that advice and apply it to your own business. The very common entrepreneurial mistake that we all make, yeah. but I hired people and spent a lot of money in the beginning that promised me all these great shiny things. Yeah. And most of them did not deliver. Mm. I didn't do my due diligence. I didn't interview them as well as I should have. I didn't follow up with uh, people they had previously worked with to get testimonials or to talk with them. And if it's one thing I can offer to anyone on this journey to success, if you want to be successful quicker, anybody you hire understand who's worked with them before, what they've been able to accomplish, look into it, ask them, interview them, really understand that they're the right person for you and that they're going to be able to deliver to you what it is that you need. And don't just jump into it blind with two feet and say, sure, and throw money at them because you think they're going to be the silver bullet that's going to make you you know, rich. It doesn't happen that way. There's no silver bullet. So really do your due diligence when you're working with anyone to build a website for you, or like Annie said, build courses for mm -hmm. you. Make sure this person's already done it before and has been very successful with what they've done before. Yeah. You know, I would never have hired a coach if I didn't know her background, how she is with business, how, what she's currently doing with her business, businesses she's had in the past successes she's had you know I don't want to hire someone that's never built their own business or has any clue how to build success why would I hire that person to help me do it right you want to hire someone that's like 10 steps ahead of you so that was probably the biggest mistake I made was just hiring all these people thinking they were going to be the ones yeah. to help me because you're grasping at straws at mm -hmm. that point because you have a lot of time yeah and energy and little money <laughs> little money and a lot of time, you know, but yet you keep spending and investing more money. And then before you know it, you've invested all this money and you're still stuck with nothing. 
Yeah. So hire the right people and do your due diligence the first time around. Oh, I think that is yeah. such brilliant advice and so common that there's a lot of shiny, glossy um, branding out there. And when that's right, when you enter a new space, not only do you uh, not concern, you're concerned about, you know, do I know everything and how will I do it? You don't know who to trust and and all that. And, and think about it, you know, when we're in our corporate environment, whatever, we've got HR, we go through s- stringent processes to actually find out someone's credentials their referees, their work experience, all of their successes and their challenges. We do that very well. And it's a real risk um, in the world of entrepreneurism because you then suddenly, you know, you're taking, you're trying to work it out yourself. You're, that's right. You don't have that much money. The temptation for quick wins yeah. is so high. Mm. And, uh, and so I actually um, am not surprised actually that, that, yeah, that's one of your biggest learnings. And I think it's such a good thing for people to hear listening in uh, that that's right. You actually want to you know, ask those people to ask questions, ask, how did they, you know, put it all together? What, if you could get three people helping your business at a certain time, what would they be? Who would they be? And why, you know, cause it can be overwhelming, right? You know, at all those different stages, mm. Um, mm, where, where to invest. So how do people find you? How do they connect with you? How do they find out all about, you know, what you have to offer, how to get connected with lead up for women? Thank you, Annie, for asking that question. I made it very easy for everyone. So we are on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, our podcast, everything's Lead Up for Women. That's where you find me. So you can find our podcast, Lead Up for Women, our magazine, Lead Up for Women, our website, leadupforwomen.com, Instagram, Lead Up for Women, Pinterest, Twitter, we're everywhere and we post everywhere. So mm-hmm. I do a word of the day everywhere. I have a YouTube channel that I teach things on. Uh, we do events every day of the week. And, you know, lo- most of these events are free. Yeah. Uh, in fact, mm-hmm. every event we do <laughs> is free. Uh, so, of course, we, we want women to be able to, you know, get the opportunity to try out the community, meet some of the other women, see if this is the right tribe for them. We, we join too many groups is what happens. And then we don't really dig down deep in the groups we're in to see what they can offer us. And I would like to challenge all your listeners. It might not be lead up for women, but I wanted to challenge them to look at the groups they're in today. Maybe it's 50, 25, 10, whatever it may be. Facebook groups. Are they bringing you a return? Are they bringing you value? Do you find value in the group? Are you engaging with the group? If the answer to that is no, try seeing if that's the group you want to engage with. If you find that it's not, then get rid of it. So simplify your life. Find the tribe that's going to be there to fuel you because so many women I hear, oh, I'd love to join, but I don't have enough time. Well, it won't be worth your while if you're not going to put time in to show up. So I definitely want to say, Find your tribe because we need a tribe. If a lead up for women's that tribe, great. We are here for you. We can serve you. If we're not, we know so many other tribes that maybe another tribe would be the tribe for you. So find the tribe that's right for you, that fuels you, that you need on your journey. And then when you find that one, show up, you know, dig in deep. Don't go wide, just go deep and uh, get the value from that group that you need. And of course, we would love to invite anyone to join any of our events or um, any of our, you know, daily activities that we have going on or download the magazine or the 10 tips or just participate any way they can. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listeners, definitely go to leadupforwomen.com and check it out. Um, It's an amazing, amazing group of women uh, globally who are just all out about supporting each other. So much free support and and just, yeah, just get yourself connected. I think it can be very lonely for people who have recently become entrepreneurs. You suddenly left the workplace. You're doing your own thing. There are struggles. We've all just been um, and still going through COVID and the impacts of. It's mm-hmm. so important to find your tribe and connect with a group who are who are not just there just to sell. Actually, the essence is actually, you know, just bring out your essence. Be the best person you can be, you know, to learn and grow from others and with others on their yeah. journey. And I love everything about what you do. So I thank you so much for sharing with me and the listeners today. And I definitely wish you all the best in your future success. 
Thank you so much, Annie. I appreciate that. And if you have the opportunity and want to allow me, I'm happy to give a free gift to all of your listeners as well. Awesome. If that's yes. something great. So we have a, we have a, this is, oh, I'm only doing this for Annie's podcast. We have an event coming up in August and I want to um, offer, this one is the only paid event we've ever done. <laughs> and uh, it's August 11th through the 13th. And of course, I want to offer your listeners a free ticket. So this is going to be my 20 years of business experience. I'm bringing it to three days and we're just going to do business training. For wow. three days. I want women to have the tools they need, gain the clarity they need, uh, really feel that support from the community. And so it's just three full days of business training for them. And I know this is things we used to do back in the corporate days, but like you said, as entrepreneurs, we don't get the opportunity to get a lot of that training anymore. So I would love to bring my knowledge to, to your listeners and give them a free ticket. So I'll make sure you have the link for that. Oh, fantastic. Well, I'll definitely be putting it on my podcast platform and to, yeah, everyone, what an offer. I'll certainly take it up. Who doesn't want to just continually learn and grow and uh, tap into, yeah, your wealth of experience. And so thank you for offering that. That sounds absolutely Thank amazing. you. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Memoirs of Successful Women. You can find me at anniegibbons.com where you can download my free resources, get connected on social and check out my online magic transformation program. If you love this show, feel free to subscribe to future episodes and of course, share it with your friends. I'll see you again soon and until then, happy podcasting.